Hey everyone, welcome back for another edition of tier listing uh, with 30k. Today we're going to be doing healers. I'm Legacy, and I'm joined today by Madara. Yo, what's up? So, just jumping right in to the healers. Uh, we're going to kind of go through them alphabetically. And we took some feedback from our last video. I think a lot of people said it was a lot of great info. Uh, but, you know, it was quite lengthy, so we're going to try to do this a little bit faster than the other one. Uh, but as you're as we're going through these, you know, if you have questions, things like that, feel free to leave comments below and uh, we'll try to address any questions you have. So first up, we have Alex Draza. So Alex Draza, to me, is a hero that is pretty niche. Um, I think she's... Strong on certain maps, uh, really strong when it comes to point control fights. Uh, basically, any time that she has dragon up and you can fight with that dragon, um, your team has a, a big advantage. So to me, what comes to mind are things like uh, Infernal Shrines is a big one, uh, potentially even Volskaya, where you're basically committed to fighting over a point for an objective. But really, I think she's pretty niche and um has to be like a, a late pick because she's very counterable so to me i would think she's somewhere in like that c to d tier um i don't know if you have any thoughts uh yeah when i look at alex Draza, i think uh she's got one of the most probably one of the strongest traits in the game which is her dragon queen but uh outside of that her heals are pretty pretty taxing on their conditions like uh your w it revolves a lot around your team's positioning, which is pretty difficult to get uh, value out of in team fights. And then, like, even her cooldowns are pretty lengthy for how much healing she provides. So I'd probably put her down in the D tier, seeing as uh, I think she's only really that great when she has her dragon up. Yep. So the next one we have is Ana. So Ana is a hero that uh, is, in my mind, very counterable with dive. So if you're playing against a team that has uh, any dive and are uh, you know coordinated, it can be really tough uh, from a self survivability. Um, it's really something that your team has to play around, and your positioning has to be um, you know pretty safe for the most part. I do think she um, you know can be viable in certain situations. I think especially when you look at her grenade that anti heal. Uh, you know, against some type of uh, big burst heal, like a, a Brightwing Z or a Rhaegar Ancestral can be uh, huge in, in turning a fight, but really that, uh, you know, self-survivability uh, issue and uh, ability to be dove, to me, I'd say probably like a C tier. Uh, I'd probably agree with that. I think Ana's probably the most mechanically demanding support all of her buttons are skill shots and she's got literally negative mobility with her self slow uh she's probably only viable as a last pick in my opinion just because of how counterable she is but i think if if you can get her there then uh c is probably a good spot for her because she can be really strong as like a last pick counter agree so next we have anduin uh anduin i think is a pretty strong hero um, he's got good overall uh, healing. I think he's got some decent talent diversity. If you wanted to, to tech into uh, different options, there, those are there. Um, I think it's a hero when you look at, um, you know, he has the, the pull that he can get two of at 16 uh, from his trait, which, uh, you know, can completely save your teammate's life. So. Uh, really, he's good from a defensive uh, standpoint, but then you can partner that up with Light Bomb and also have some offensive aggressiveness. So uh, I think he's a pretty good all-around healer. Uh, you do have to position you know, somewhat safe, but I think from an overall standpoint, uh, I think he's definitely up there with some of the best healers right now. I'd probably say something like A tier. Yeah, I think he's probably A bordering on S, to be honest. I think his, his pull is like probably the best early game support ability. Uh maybe other than like reactive, but that's that's more offensive than defensive. But uh I think he's got really good sustain heal. Uh also follow up CC on support is pretty nice with his root. 
And then another thing, I think uh, kind of like the support version of a mosh pit, if you can go a game with a light word, sanctification or whatever it is, and the enemy has no interrupts for it, it can pretty much make the game impossible for the enemy team to kill you and your, uh, and your boys. So yeah, I'd say he's definitely one of the top tiers. Agree. Um, so next we have Ariel. Uh, Ariel is definitely a healer that um, in the current meta you don't see too often. Uh, really, when I think of Ariel, I think of uh, its best situation in, in double support comps. Uh, I think um, Ariel sometimes has a, a problem of getting poked out by the enemy team. And there's also, um, you know, kind of when you typically think of Ariel comps, you're thinking of some type of hyper carry, whether that be like a, a Vala, um, a Lunara, a Cassia, things like that. So I, I think we don't see too much of her, um, but I think she definitely can be played, but it's so uh, situational in the entire team, it seems like needs to really be built around it that uh, to me, I'd be thinking of like in that like, D, maybe C tier uh, area. Uh, I kind of agree. I think I was thinking D to F, so probably stick in the middle and D. But mm -hmm. I think uh, she's way too comp dependent to be viable, especially with uh, how her healing works. I feel like if you're behind in a game and you don't have a, a specific like Omega battery, like a Gul'dan or a Vala maybe, then she's going to get very, very little healing done in team fights, especially if... Uh, you just can't have anyone that generates enough uh, energy for you. So yeah, definitely a, a D tier, probably. So next we have Brightwing. Uh, Brightwing is a, definitely a favorite of mine. I um, think Brightwing, when you look at all the, the tools of the kit, um, really has pretty much everything you, you'd want. Uh, you have a, a global uh, ability, a large percentage-based heal, uh, you have your own mobility and savability with Blink Heal. Uh, you have um, follow-up CC or even lead CC with the point-and-click polymorph, as well as um, you know that polymorph being able to help uh, you know against dive things like that. So uh, when I think of Brightwing right now, I think of uh, one of the best healers in uh, S tier. Uh, yeah, I think Brightwing is disgusting. Her polymorph <laughs> just completely nullifies every melee here in the game maybe especially uh the squishier ones that get one shot off of it and then having a global heal uh if your teammate messes up and you're across the map well you can save them because you're right wing which is nice uh also i mean they did nerf it but her invisible friends still one of the most insane 20s in the game i think if you have anything that's like point and click it just stops which uh as a cassia player really sucks because you can never press ball lightning again yeah, definitely S tier. Really annoying hero to play against. All right, next we have Deckard, another favorite of mine. Uh, I think when I think of Deckard, I think of a lot of uh, area control. Um, when you look at the the cube, uh, you know all the shapes, the the squares and the triangles that he throws out. Uh, but then you have uh, the potions that you can really set up around an area. As well as you know the the sleep or lower nato both good area control so really uh deckard uh, excels fighting around uh, specific points uh, especially when you can be set up in advance uh one other big thing that deckard can provide is anti-heal so you know similar to like you know talked about with Ana grenade being a huge uh tool in team fights the emerald can be um you know a huge way to help secure kills, um, you know, and following up on, on CC and team fights to secure those kills. So uh, I think Deckard for me is probably right around like the B tier. I think he's slightly below some of the, the um, you know, top supports that we're seeing right now, but I do think he's up there and, and in my opinion, under, underplayed in um, CCL right now. Yeah, I think uh, Deckard's burst healing with uh, shield pots at 4, and if you go big pots at 13, but even if you don't go, his uh, his saving power is really insane, especially if you can, like you said, get your pots set up. Only problem he has is uh, no cleanse, which is kind of important for the way he heals. If your teammate gets stunned and can't move to your pots, then your healing is 
essentially nullified. But I think despite that, with the amount of CC and zone control he gives, uh, I think he still belongs in D. I think uh, if he did have a cleanse, then he would definitely be a, an S or an A tier healer. But I just think they, uh, they needed to find a way to nerf the old man, so that's probably how they did it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think uh, really the only downside to his kit is not having a cleanse. Um, yeah. Alright, next one we have is Karazim. Karazim is another healer that I think is pretty situational. Uh, I think Karazim is best on uh, maps with heavy rotations, and um, if you can build a comp that either has some type of, um, you know, I think of things that go well with it are, you know, like a Tyrael where, you know, your team is get, getting kind of excess, uh, you know, shielding where, like, the lack of heals don't matter. Um, or uh, a team where healing isn't as uh, necessary. You know, I'm thinking about paired up with like a Phoenix, something like that, that you know, doesn't require as much healing output uh, and also has the mobility with it. So uh, when I think of Karazim, I think of maps like Dragonshire, uh, Cursed Hollow, things where there's a lot of rotations and um, you can really play with the uh, mobility. Uh, one thing that's nice with Karazim is you can uh, really go either old. I think we see mostly seven-sided picked uh, for for help with securing kills, but uh, using Palm um, when used correctly and effectively, it, it can be um, massive for for swinging team fights. So, um, and then lastly, kind of the thing to note is that he can tech into cleanse at 16 and have. Uh, you know, multiple uses, you know, he has the three dashes and you can also get more dashes at 20 if you choose to go that route. So uh, he's able to cleanse and support his team uh, quite well from, from that front. I'd probably say somewhere in what I'd kind of say is like the situa situational later pick tier is like C. Yeah, I'd probably agree that he's more situational, a little bit like Ana, but uh, I think... Uh... Instead of relying more on not getting countered by the enemy team, he relies a little bit more on the map choice and uh, what the rest of your comp is. I think if your comp's identity is to maybe look for picks in rotations, like you were saying, or maybe even to dive, then he's pretty good. But his healing throughput is quite weak. Uh, even if you like talent in the healing, it's still not going to be that great. Uh, I think his strength shines in being more of a, a damage outputter. So yeah, I think uh, if if you're looking for that niche in your healing slot as a later pick, then then he can be good. So I'd agree with C. All right. Next we have Lucio. Um, right now, uh, I think for the first half of CCL, he's pretty much been perma banned. If that uh, gives you any inclination of where he should go, uh, basically before dropping him in S, though, uh, I'd say you know what Lucio gives to a team, you know, uh, I think move speed just in general, kind of starting with one piece of his kit. Uh, I think almost any time you have a the option to tech into move speed in, in any MOBA, it seems like it's it's a it's a huge thing that people always want, and uh, you know, it fundamentally changes like how heroes can be played, how rotations can happen, things like that. So uh, just the move speed alone uh, is such a huge asset to a team uh lucio being able to you know attack while moving and moving fast around uh walls can really uh hurt an enemy team in terms of rotations uh, and help your team be able to rotate faster in the early game um, and have priority on waves through that um, and then kind of getting into uh, at 10 uh, he's able to cleanse everyone on on the team including himself which at a competitive level um, just can be broken at times which is why you see him uh you know almost perma banned right now so for me it's a it's an easy s probably the best healer in the game right now um from my opinion yeah i think uh ever since the high five got reworked to being a cleanse as well as a self cleanse uh he's just been reigning dominant even uh, if you don't go that, Soundbear is still a really good ultimate. Uh, and like even the counters to Lucio, 
if he skill matches them hard enough, they're not even counters anymore, so he's just a ridiculous hero right now. Yeah. Please nerf. <laughs> so the next one we have is Lili. So uh, when looking at this tier list, I think um, viewing most of these as you know how viable they are in solo support comps. Um, in my opinion, Lili is not very viable from a solo support aspect. I would be putting her in F. Uh, I think if you do run types of double support, uh, especially at the lower levels, um, I think she can definitely be good uh, in double support. Um, but even at, at higher levels, I think from a double support aspect, it, you know, she brings a lot more damage than most of the other healers. You can tech into a cleanse, which can uh, help if you are running double support and you know your, your other support doesn't have a cleanse. Uh, I think Jugs is an incredibly strong ultimate uh, if the other team doesn't interrupt it. So I think from a double support aspect, uh, Lili can definitely um, you know move up a a tier or two. But I think from a solo support aspect, uh, she just uh, doesn't have quite the tools that the other heroes have. Yeah, she just doesn't provide enough uh, saving mechanisms. Uh, I think her cleanse is one of the better ones in the game. Isn't it? It's a little shorter range than most, though, right? Yeah, it's shorter range, but it it also uh, has the cooldown. benefit of uh, her trait lowering. Or yeah. Basically, whenever she's taking damage, it lowers the cooldown. So it is the shortest uh, cooldown cleanse in the game, in theory, I guess, unless yeah. depending on how how many Uther auto attacks are <laughs> are going through, but. But True. Yeah. yeah, I'd agree she's probably F tier for healing, but I think the main problem is we're trying to uh, put a DPS character into the healing tier list, so that's probably why she belongs there. Mm -hmm. uh, next one is Lieutenant Morales, or Medic. Um, so actually, uh, here I really enjoy playing from a Storm League perspective. Um, I think she's only viable as a very late pick and um, on certain maps. I think Morales is extremely strong in the early game, but then pretty much once 10 hits and if the other team has drafted any kind of uh, dive uh, and they have their ultimates is really when you see Morales become a uh, liability. So, you know, from, from my perspective, I only see her as like a, a Braxis, um, you know, win early game and, and snowball kind of a, hero uh and competitively i don't think she is very viable outside of you know juice pirates or something that's you know full <laughs> cheese but uh I, I would put her at f uh yeah i'd agree i think uh she ends up becoming something that you have to protect instead of something that protects you which is normally what a healer does so pretty uh bad normally yeah uh, next we have Malfurion. Uh, Malfurion, I think over time is, you know, uh, you know, back in HEC days was, you know, first pick healer. I think there's been, you know, times where Malf is, you know, dropped maybe as low as C. Uh, but right now I'd say Malf is, after uh, the most recent changes that Malf had that gave the sleep on the root, um, it, it really brought uh, Malfurion back into a, a decent power uh, spot. Malfurion is uh, you know, a hero that really enables some of those uh, dive heroes like Tracer, you know, Genji, things like that, that uh, you can get a heal on and support them even if they're you know, a screen away. Uh, Malfurion, um, especially with Tranquility, is uh, while he doesn't have the ice block he used to and uh, is diveable, Trank uh, provides, you know, the, the armor and a lot of self-sustain, and um, I think he's a pretty strong healer. Uh, his cleanse isn't as strong as um, some cleanses in terms of uh, just removes a CC. It doesn't, you know, make them unstoppable for a second. However, you can use it on your entire team, so it does have some increased effectiveness against things like your whole team getting... Uh, arrowed by Hanzo and getting stunned that you can cleanse all of them if you have a heal on them. So I think Malfurion is, is pretty strong, I'd say, in right around that A tier. Yeah, uh, I think uh, 
if you're not too pressured as Malph, you probably I think that's the most healing throughput in the game on one character. So if uh if you can pick him later, then he's and he's not countered at all. Uh maybe even an S tier character, but because you you can't really just lock him in and do that, I think uh A's is a good place for him. I think uh the root is one of the best CCs on a healer in the game. Uh it's so punishing now with the sleep as well, because there's like that half a second when you're asleep that you can take damage and you still won't even wake up. So it feels really broken, especially as a follow-up. Uh, the cleanse is a little bit janky just because of how it works, and there's some things that you can't even cleanse, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. So that makes it a little bit weaker, but like you said, the fact that it affects everyone that has your uh, your hat on it makes it, makes it a little bit uh, recoverable. Yep. So next one we have is Rhaegar. Uh, Rhaegar, after the most recent buffs, I think is in a pretty solid position. Uh, I think when he first received the buffs, he was too strong, and so uh, after the nerfs, I think he's sitting in a pretty good spot. I also think Rhaegar has some pretty decent talent diversity. Um, I think when looking at you know the totem build, um, I think you can go into uh, wolf talent on one uh, the armor is really nice uh, but then you know you see some shield build i personally don't think it's that viable from a competitive aspect uh, but i know it can be strong in uh, your storm league games um, i'd say Rhaegar for me one of the other big things is he's one of what i guess three heroes that have a, a baseline cleanse so, you know, right from level one, he has a cleanse, um, but he can also use it offensively, and uh, using purge offensively uh, can be a great way to secure kills, especially in the early game, and uh, help to push that lead. Uh, you know, purge, you can also get the, the anti-heal if you're, you know, facing, you know, a, a Brightwing Z or something like, you know, some big burst heal, for instance. The anti-heal can be nice on a kill target, uh, and you also have the... Ancestral healing that you know provides burst heal. So you know between his his AOE heals with his chain heal, uh, his cleanse and the burst heal from ancestral, uh, as well as the option you know some games to look at bloodlust. Uh, I think he's sitting in a pretty good spot. I'd probably say something like A. Yeah, uh, really good consistent healing like you said. Really good burst healing and the level one purge baseline is really good uh, i think when he had his totem build at full power he's probably s tier just because of how impactful it was at shutting down the enemy team but after the nerfs it's a little bit more tame uh, i think another good thing about him is uh he brings macro to your team from a support role which only like a couple characters do and having your support able to clear waves and do camps just makes uh especially early game macro a lot easier and simpler which uh, I think is pretty valuable from a competitive standpoint. Next up, we have Stukov. So Stukov uh, is a hero that I think has been pretty strong for a while now. Um, he's had you know slight uh, changes here and there. I think he's a hero that uh, also has good talent diversity. I think when looking at um, his builds, um, on most tiers, there's multiple options that are viable, uh, whether you look to go into his like reactive build or whether you go into his uh, silence pool e-build. I think both can be strong in specific situations. Um, so it's nice to have some diversity um, from that talent pick perspective. Uh, looking at his ultimates, um, both can be good for you know creating space or you know as a save. Uh, and really, when you look at Stukov, his main weakness is not having a cleanse. So not, you know, having a cleanse as well as, um, you know, his heals are generally not as big. So the, you know, uh, potential for your team dying to burst is higher uh, with a Stukov team. So having, you know, swipes or shove as uh, a disengage for your team is is nice um, as like kind of a secondary option to cleanse but you know really i think not having a cleanse is ultimately what hurts him a little bit and bumps him um i'd say you know into a tier i think potentially into b tier but most likely probably something in a 
Yeah, uh, I do think he's probably right now. I think his heals are actually really good, and early game he's probably one of the best team fight supports if you go reactive. I feel like you win any level 1 fight if he's got that. Uh, also really, really good CC with his silence puddle, and if you go the root combo at 13, uh, he can just solo engage, which is really good from a support uh, role if uh, he's not under pressure. I think if he had cleanse, he'd probably be a borderline S tier, but that's uh, another weakness they gave him, I suppose. Uh, and on top of that, his autos hit like a truck. So if you <laughs> if you can ever get melee in the in the fight with him, then you can dish out some good damage. Yeah, I definitely agree. I I think if Sukov had cleanse, he'd be S tier for sure. I think he provides so much from uh you know follow up standpoint, uh, CC yeah. standpoint, everything that uh, really. You know, when I look at him, his main weakness is just not having that cleanse, and that's the only reason he's not in S. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, we have Turan. So I think she is um, in an interesting position. I think right now she's not played too much. Um, for a while, it seemed like uh, the Owl build was really her only build that people um, could play and would be viable. Uh, she had some changes, and uh, I think you know her trait build is something you may see in Storm League as well now. Um, I, I think to me, it's it's pretty much a hero that thrives in uh, you know one shot burst uh, type builds. Her healing overall is generally less of the other uh, high tier supports, so uh, she generally struggles a little bit to keep up with. Um, overall healing but her her stun and the ability to to mark and uh, make a specific enemy vulnerable really helps in terms of if your team's win condition is uh you know ccing and, and blowing up one hero um, i'd say i think she's kind of a uh, niche overall um i'd say probably d tier from an overall perspective um but i think probably a healer that um when paired with you know maybe another a healer like uh you know kerosene something like that 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 has damage as well i think uh there's some interesting uh double support compositions that you could run with her yeah i think uh on her own she doesn't provide much healing really good for a, a burst one shot comp but uh if they survive the one shot and the fight goes a little bit longer than intended, it'll feel really difficult to keep your team up. I'm pretty sure. Uh, suffice it to say, she's my favorite character to play in ARAM. It's just uh, it's a shame she's not she's not good in in the normal game as a healer. All right, next we have Uther. Uh, Uther, I think, is a really strong hero. He has point and click CC. Um, I think both ultimates that he has are, are viable. However, I think uh, D-Shield tends to be uh, the better options in most cases. I think if you um, are picking an Uther comp, ideally you have uh, some type of hero that can really get value out of that D-Shield and go in during a fight um, and you know secure kills and and um, you know that's really I think the best way that. Uther tends to get value. Uh, Uther's biggest weakness is his overall sustain healing. So, um, you know, if you're up against something like a Lunara uh, that can really output a lot of AoE uh, damage, it can be really hard for an Uther to keep up in heals for that. So I think that's his biggest weakness. Um, he also has a cleanse, um, which uh, not all the healers do so that's definitely something to point out as important here and then at 20 uh, i think he has really really strong 20s i think the the standard is you know after you die you get to get full value out of your trait and your healing and then you know you're coming back to life um, which is really nice uh, but there's also games where uh, if you can get value out of it the aoe d shield um, can just absolutely break the game so uh, i think just from his overall weaknesses against poke and sustain damage it knocks him down a little bit but i think he's still a really strong hero probably in that b tier 
Yeah, I'd say in our current meta, he's probably around there. Uh, I do think his kit has enough in it that he could be A tier. I think we just don't see him enough right now. I don't know if you remember back in Season 1, when he was mm -hmm. first pick every game. Uh, I think if, if double support was a little bit more common right now, we'd probably bump him up. But I think just to a, a lack of seeing his power, uh, it's hard to judge how far he can really go. Yeah, I think you, you said it perfectly that uh, given his kit, you know, his point and click CC, his multiple saves, whether that be cleanse or D shield, uh, he really thrives on keeping people alive and uh, especially in that double support uh, type of meta. Right now, we're not really in that meta, but uh, whenever there is a double support meta, he always shoots up in, in value. So, yeah. definitely agree with you there. And last but not least, we have White Mane, <laughs> you know, obviously the best healer in the game. Um, <laughs> No, I, a white mane is definitely a uh, a personal uh, favorite of mine. Uh, I think she is uh, criminally underrated at the moment. Um, I think of her uh, very similarly that I think of Malfurion uh, in terms of uh, I think she's able to um, provide a lot of healing and, and save during team fights. Uh, I think, you know, she has that uh, AoE ultimate that provides your team all armor and healing. Um, and then at 20, it can be upgraded to provide everyone a, a two-second unstoppable. So uh, not just one second, but two second, which is kind of insane when you think about, like, all the cleanses in the game, you know, being one second or purge being, you know, half a second. Um you know, two seconds of unstoppable is is crazy good. Uh, I think, especially when you look at White Mane, her level one, uh, providing additional healing to low targets. She's really good at keeping people alive when they're low. Um, I think her biggest issue, which has always been, I think her issue is just overall um, how she can do against poke though, um, and how much mana it takes to sustain. Uh, but I, I think if if you juggle it well and you um, are playing the fights correctly and your team's not taking too much free damage, that uh, it's less of an issue um, than most people um, think it is. So I would probably be looking to put her at B, but I'm sure uh, you might have a differing opinion. Uh, I wish I could say she's B, but I'd probably put her a little lower. Um, I think she's got some of the best uh, burst heals in the game without an ultimate, and then with her ult, it's even better. Uh, but her consistent healing is just, it's its exposable, I feel like. And the fact that uh, most of her healing seems to come from her, her W, which you have to channel. If you can stun a white main while she's doing that, or maybe just one shot her with some skill shots, it feels a little bit difficult uh, to play around. Uh, I mean, I'm not the white main player myself, but I just know I love uh, when I'm Ming, if I see a, a white main standing still, I like one-shotting her. It's pretty nice. All right. We can compromise and put her in C. Yeah, that works. Uh, and then as I look through it, um, you know, if there's, I don't know if there's any heroes that you think you would move up or down um, or really uh, left to right as well from a power standpoint. I think from an overall standpoint, I feel pretty good about the list overall, both uh, within the tiers and then uh, left to right from a power perspective. I don't know if there's any that I would change. Uh, any that you think you would change or... Uh, just for clarity, left is the stronger, right? It goes Correct. strongest to the weakest? Okay. Um, this looks good. I mean, obviously, Lili belongs in the DPS character tier list, so <laughs> I don't know why she's here, but other than that, everything looks fine here. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed... Uh, like, like I said, we tried to make this one a lot shorter uh, than our previous one, uh, just based on some feedback we received. So uh, hopefully this helped, um, you know, going through it a little bit quicker. As I mentioned below, uh, before, though, uh, feel free to post, you know, comments if you have any questions. Um, you know, we'll look through this and try to answer any questions that you have. Um, Madara, where can anyone who's interested, uh, where can they find you? Uh, I don't stream much right now, just because of uh, living conditions, but...
twitch.tv slash moderahots. And then Twitter, uh, moder underscore hots. And then CCL is where I'll be playing mostly. All right. And then for me, uh, somewhat similar, I don't stream super often, but I do occasionally, and that's at Legacy100. And then uh, at Twitter, um, uh, the Twitter at is Legacy underscore Hots. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully you can uh, keep watching us and supporting us during CCL. And um, if you have any questions, like I said, uh, comment below and make sure to like and subscribe and have a great day. Thanks.